Hey guys, welcome back to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Today we are going to go up into the craft room and we are going to redo a lamp that is on my mantle that I have been struggling with for quite a while now. So spring is coming and this lamp has a beautiful lampshade and lamp style to it. However, my style has changed a little bit, but the lampshade is a dark red color and for spring it's just not working for me. So we're going to recover our lampshade and we're going to paint our lamp. Join me as we go upstairs and work on some DIY crafting. Before we actually go and get started, make sure you find that subscribe button and click that along with the little bell and then click all notifications. This way you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. I'd love to have you here all the time to join me do crafting and gardening and farming and cooking and homeschooling and so much more. So y'all, this is my mantle and my lamp. The red lampshade has been driving me nuts since I decorated for spring. So I am going to change it. Lampshades are expensive and new lamps are expensive, so I'm going to finish this one by painting the lamp and changing the shade. You'll need some E6000 glue, best glue in the world. I'm using Waverly chalk paint and a paintbrush. You can get this at Walmart, um, it's like $1.67, and then the wax also I'm going to be using. And then I'm using burlap ribbon, which I'll need scissors to cut. So the first step of our project is to paint the lampshade, not painting the base or the mechanism where the light bulb goes. I'm going to be using the Waverly White chalk paint. I got this at Walmart. I want to say it was like seven or eight dollars for the big bottle because I use chalk paint for a lot of my projects. Just trying to get the top off. Chalk paint is very thick. If you've never used chalk paint before, it does get everywhere if you don't have on gloves. Um, I'm so used to just being full of paint anyway, but you would just brush it onto your project. It's very thick. As you could see, it was full of paint and it just stayed on the brush. I'm trying to make sure that I get every single crevice and corner with the white paint. You could always tape off your mechanism at the top and the wire. I just am not one of those people, so I will just paint around it and wipe off any excess. Chalk paint is pretty much a one coat coverer for some things. However, the base of this was not primed in any way and it did leave a couple of streaks, although they're hard to see on here. So I will have to go back and do a second coat. So now it's time to take apart this lampshade. Most lampshades have an interior lining and the outside is a different piece. So I'm gonna take off these edges. They are kind of a piece that just kind of makes it look finished. I'm gonna take those off. And I found out as I was doing this that my lampshade's lining is actually over the color. Most of them are the other way around, which is not a problem, but just so that you're aware. I'm just gonna cut off the red lining on the outside and leave my inner lining, making sure not to poke any holes in it. Because my lining was over the color, I just had to reattach it. Now for this part, you'll need clothespins, a material or burlap ribbon. I got this burlap ribbon. It's $9.99 at Hobby Lobby. I got it at, the, at Christmas time and it was like 40% off or something. I have like three of them. So I was like, I'm just going to use this burlap. It is wired. So that actually kind of helps me in this project just because it will help to hold its form a little over the edges. And we're just going to wrap it just like this around. So I was measuring top to bottom and then I'm going to cut 20 pieces after looking at all the pieces I needed I needed 20 so I'm just cutting 20 pieces of burlap ribbon to use to go around my entire lampshade
Now that I've cut my pieces, I'm gonna actually cover the metal pieces between, and then I'm gonna put a piece in the middle. So I'm going to start by laying it out to see how many and make sure I have enough. As you see, they will overlap when wrapping. Because my ribbon is only a few inches thick, it actually will leave a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna start by gluing with the E6000 around the edge only in the spots that I am going to be attaching the ribbon. So I found these handy little jar bottles of E6000 at Walmart and I am just going to put a little bit on here. I'm gonna take my ribbon leaving about an inch or so on the one end, and then I'm going to attach it tightly with clothespins. Now I'm going to continue this all the way around the bottom of the lampshade, just placing some glue, putting my ribbon over at about the same length, Take two clothespins to hold them in place and just continue. Now once you're finished, you're going to want to flip it over and then we're going to do the pieces on the top. Again, my lining was giving me a hard time, so I had to keep messing with it. You wanna put your pieces attached at the top across from each other. Because it's smaller on top, they are going to overlap on top. Just continue all the way around, doing opposite sides until all the pieces are secure. Now once all your pieces are attached, you're gonna to wanna to let it sit for quite a few hours. I usually let mine sit for about five or six hours, just to dry. So then I moved back to my lamp. Um, I always put my paintbrushes in a Ziploc bag when I'm not done a project, just to kinda of save it from washing, and I'm, keeps it from drying out. So I'm just putting on a second coat with this chalk paint. My chalk paint tended to leave like little lines in my paint so I thought that it would be better if I repainted them. Make sure you get the bottom guys so that you can't see any of the dark. Again I'm putting my paintbrush back in here just in case I needed it. So now that my lampshade is dried and the first coat of these is on, I'm going to actually trim the longer pieces up around the top of my shade. And then I'm going to start doing the same thing, attach glue, put on the next piece of ribbon in between the sections that are not covered. Continue this all the way around and then flip your lampshade upside down. So the bottom is totally done and I'm gonna start around the top. Now you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of pressure on the wired sides to make them lay flat up along the base. And I'm putting glue on the metal piece there to kind of hold the ribbon in place all the way up the sides. 
Again, it's really important that you pull on each side of the ribbon separately. It will make it a little bit more taut and more finished looking. After I had finished doing all of these, I couldn't decide if I wanted a ribbon around the middle or if I wanted a braid of jute twine or something around the top and bottom. I just had not decided. I just thought maybe a ribbon there. So I'm letting that dry and I decide I'm going to go back and wax my lamp. You need a clean white cloth and I usually when I shake my bottle there's always wax in the lid so that's where I tend to get my my wax from. Now the key is to brush it on somewhat heavy and then wipe off your excess. I mean you can kind of see that the color of my lamp is changing from white to a tannish color and it's hard to see here on the film but it actually looks very much like wood that's not been finished. Of course, the more you put on there, the darker it will be. The key here is to make sure you try and get into every single little crevice. Sorry for the movement of the camera shaking for me rubbing so hard. And just continue to add the wax on all parts, of course, not the wire or the place where the light bulb goes. And just keep rubbing it in until you get that desired effect. Now I will shake my wax in the middle of projects because I like using the lid. It just really, it gives me such a controlled amount that I'm using. Now down here is really textured. It's hard, might be hard for y'all to see because of the way the light is, but it is a very textured piece on the bottom. So I really wanted to make sure that I could get this wax and color into every single crease. I contemplated getting a paintbrush and putting it into those creases, but I was afraid it would be too dark. So I just kept continue rubbing with the rag. Can you see the color on there, y'all? I love the look. It's so pretty. What's nice about the wax is you can continue to wax often and get the look that you desire. I just kept adding in those crevices. See y'all, for some reason, my video of me cutting all this twine was not recorded. So I actually just took some jute twine that I got at the dollar store and I made three pieces and I made these long braids, one for the top, one for the bottom of my lampshade. So I'm gonna actually attach them on the top and bottom 
just to make it look a little more finished. So because the ends are open and there's no knot, I will just kind of ball them together and I will put the E6000 glue underneath one of the ribbons and I'll put a lot of it so that it will actually hold all these ends. And of course, I will secure it with a clothespin. Then I'll just work my way with the glue and then the braid all the way around the lampshade, top and bottom, and secure with clothespins as I go. I think the best advice I could give you here is to work in small sections and don't put too much glue in too long of a spot because you want to make sure it's stuck and you want to make sure you have enough clothespins to put on there to hold it down. And of course, after you get completed, you're going to want to leave it to dry for a really good long time. So I'm not cutting the end of my braid here. I'm going to actually let it dangle, but I did glue it all the way over where I put in the piece inside the ribbon. And I'm just going to leave this piece hanging until a little later when I start to unclip and finally finish the lampshade totally. So now I'm just going to do the bottom. just trimming some fraying edges and then of course I'm going to glue it underneath the ribbon in the same exact spot that I started the top one. You want your secure ends to be on the same side so when you're placing it somewhere those ends that are the end won't be seen. And then just keep going all the way around, securing with the E6000 and clothespins until you're back in your beginning spot. Don't forget, leave the end of your braid still hanging over top of where you tucked it in. Now I'll let it dry for about 24 hours. So I wanted to add some more wax to my lamp while my lampshade was drying. There were just some spots that I was just not content with. I really wanted the wax to be really deep into the grooves of my lamp. It turned out so pretty. Well, my lampshade's been drying most of the day. I am going to finish up the edges of my braid. So I'm just taking off all the clothespins. So after taking off all the clothespins, leave the clothespin on your braid because you don't want it to come undone. So we're going to actually secure this right where we tucked it in. We're going to overlap it just a little bit. Oops, got to close that wax so I don't spill it. I'm going to use the E6000 and put a pretty good amount of glue 
on the spot where the ends will meet. I will clip it and then cut the braid. I'm just kind of pushing it down a little bit to make sure it's staying. I'm going to add some more glue over top so that I can adhere it to the other part of the braid. You could use your fingers, but I decided I was just going to use a clothespin to push down the ends to make them flat up against the other braid. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. So I'm just going to put a pretty good amount of glue, lay the braid down on top. I'm going to pin it where I want the end to be. I'm going to cut off the rest of the edges. Put a little bit more glue so that they don't come undone and just push it down a little. As you see the braid is right on the edge, this is my end. And I will leave this like this probably for about 8 to 12 hours. But guys look how pretty my lamp turned out, what a difference. So here's my mantle again. I can't believe the transformation. I'm so much happier with my spring mantle. Well guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for joining me and I hope this inspired you to go fix a lamp instead of taking it to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army to go ahead and revamp it and use some paint and make it beautiful again. Thanks y'all. See you next time.